Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're starting off with some of the new Dina Wakely February releases and using masks in our art journal. So I'm starting off on a page that I really, really wasn't happy with and I don't do this very often in my art journals, but I'm painting over a page. Um, I think I've done that about four times in the last three and a half years I've been art journaling. Um, where I've actually painted over a page so um, that's what I'm doing and I decided I just paint over it in the way that I do when I have no idea what I'm doing which is just add color all over so I'm starting off with a range of rainbow colors in Dina's paints so I've got blackberry, tangerine, um, lemon, lime, turquoise, magenta fuchsia, heather and ocean I think and I am just painting in little patches of colour. When I'm doing something like this I tend to paint in threes or put the colour three places on my page usually. Um, sometimes I get a little bit carried away and, and forget but it's, it's a good rule of thumb. It helps create those visual triangles on your page and you know I, it's just something I do so I'm used to it. So once I've finished, I am going in and drying my layers. I am boosting a little bit of colour. Um, because I was working on such, there was such a lot of paint in the background because I, I had worked at those layers beforehand for a long time and I really wasn't very happy with them. Um, so you can see some of my paint layers aren't brilliant, but I knew I was going to do some stuff over the top. And one of the things I like to do on these pages is to do mark making. And the reason for that is when you've just got those patches of colour, even though they're pretty, it's um, not blended together, it's not cohesive, it's not sitting together, they're just different patches of colour. By putting marks over the top, it starts to blend them all together. And the real secret to this is making sure your marks don't stay in a particular patch of colour. So you can see, for example, with these fuchsia dots, I'm not just putting them in the turquoise area. I'm putting them through the magenta and onto the blackberry and onto the um, tangerine and sort of making it flow across the page so it leads your eye across the page. If I had just kept them all in the magenta or all in the um, turquoise area to begin with, I would still end up with that sort of blocky effect where, you know, everything was just in one place. The other thing with mark making is um, you could overlap your mark making. So you can see here that I'm putting those um, ocean dots over the top of the fuchsia dots. I've also changed the size of my brush. So I'm getting it, even though it's just using the brush like I did before, I'm getting a different size. And you can see already it starts to look a little bit more interesting. It's leading my eye around the page. And it's making those colours in the background make a little bit of sense, um, even though even though it's a mad rainbow of colours in the background, they kind of now have a little bit of a purpose to being there. So um, you can do this with paint if you um, wanted to. You could use paint markers. Usually when I'm doing little lines like this, I would certainly use a paint marker. I was trying to... Um, extend my abilities a little bit. Um, as you can see, my right hand is in a cast at the moment, so I'm doing everything left-handed um, with my non-dominant hand. And um, drawing lines is really tricky. <laughs> you have to concentrate a lot more. So I found I needed to practice that a bit, but I quite like how some of them are chunky and some of them are not, and they're all kind of going in a funny angle. You can see here too, I'm using exactly the same process that I did with the ones above. I am making sure that they're sort of organic, they are flowing across the page. I'm also doing that, those marks in series of three, and you'll notice that with all the marks I've got on there. I've put them in three different places on my page. Now you don't have to do that, it's just the kind of rule of thumb I have. It's one of my non-thinking things. If I've got a paint or a colour in my hand, I will put it in three places. If I'm doing a mark, I will do it in three places. So um, that's that's just me. Um, whether you choose to use that or not, that's up to you. 
So this is one of the new stencils from Dina. Um, and it's a great one because it's a stencil and mask set. So you can see you've got the mask on one side and the stencil on the other. They've got a little bit of um, and the sticky tape to hold them in there in place, um, which is worthwhile keeping them in. I've actually got a little plastic bag where I put all my masks in so I can keep them in one place. So I really liked that there's both male and um, female silhouettes here because a lot of the stuff we have are very female oriented so it's really nice to have some males represented in um, the, the stencils and so on. And I'm using black gesso which is really really dark, really really opaque and you can see it's going over those layers beautifully. Now the reason I chose to do this is when I saw the faces it kind of reminded me that they kind of make a love hearty type shape on the page. So I chose to lean into that as the case may be and put the two figures looking each at each other and um, creating that almost love heart effect. And then using some um, alphabet fodder, which, or collage fodder, sorry, which you would have seen in one of my other videos or a video coming up, not sure which um, order they're going to come in. So these are some new, um, oh, sorry, it's a new stamp set by Dina, block stamps and I've just used some paint to stamp them out onto some cardboard I coloured with gloss sprays. I'm trying to think of all the things I've used. So I've just sprayed a whole heap of gloss sprays onto a piece of cardboard and then I've just stamped over the top. So there's a video coming up about how I've done this. But you can see here I've got a whole range of them. Uh, I do need to find a better way to sort them out. I think I might um, steal Dina's idea of the trading card little pockets and putting all the alphabet letters in there once I've cut them out. I think um, that would save me a lot of time and effort instead of having to go through the tub every time I want to find something and then in a later video you'll see where I actually knock that tub everywhere and it goes in all my drawers and I had to go through and find them all again. So uh, yes, storing, storing that somewhere sensible would be a really good idea. I'm busily looking through this pile for an E in white. I forgot that it's sitting right up at the top of the page. <laughs> so I'm spending all this time looking for an E in white. Um, I'm just that silly. So yeah, I've just found it. There you go. <laughs> it was that simple. It was staring at me the whole time. Oh, life's so easy in, in hindsight, isn't it? So once I've put all my mess away, um, I'm going to glue these down on the page. So I chose the stamping and white obviously because it was going to stand out a little bit and I've chosen to add a little bit of pink um, just to highlight the letters a little bit which is hard to see um, on the um, video but you'll kind of see it in the close-up. Um, it's also a little bit awkward to do um, holding down very small pieces of paper um, without getting your fingers in the way and um, using a very big paperweight for a very small piece of paper. Once I've finished I'm just going to use some glue to glue them down on the page and I have kind of offset them a little bit because I knew I wanted to use some of the heart washi, Dina's heart washi to put on here as well. It's one of my favourite things to do with sort of abstracty figures like this is to add a little washi heart to them. So once I've glued down all my words, then I'm going to find my washi. It's also really, really hard to tear. <laughs> so I ended up resorting to stickers. So this is um, one of, D I think from Dina's original washi tape, she had the, um, the heart washi, but um, I think in both sets there was some heights, but I, I like this thick one. I also decided I would go around with my white pen and just do some really scratchy white scribbly lines around it. I have a little bit of regret about doing this. I usually love putting white lines around these but I think I actually lost some of the detail of the faces so um, I'm still undecided about that one but it is what it is. So this is a close-up of my page. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm much happier than how it began. Um, so I do encourage you, if you ever get really, really stuck with something and really don't know what to do with it, 
just paint over it. It's just paint and paper. It's all good. No one's going to tell you off for it. No one's going to know. Um, find out all the details for the products below if you're interested. And until next time, bye for now.